What's up everybody, this is John with John Fair Innovations and I'm so excited to bring you my latest maths lesson. So today I'm going to show you how to calculate the roots of a function in a matter of seconds. Now before I get into the video, if you do enjoy it, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment on maybe another maths topic you'd like me to tackle, and if you really enjoy the video, do make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the videos as they come out, and it really does help the channel. So if you've done so already, thank you so much for your support. Now, what roots of functions are is when we're trying to solve the function when it equals zero. So say, for example, if we have y equals x squared, if we were trying to solve the, the roots of the function algebraically, what we'd be trying to solve is zero equals x squared. Now, finding the roots of functions is a very fundamental aspect in mathematics. We use these for higher calculations. We use this for proofs, for example. So it's really important that you have a grasp of how to find the roots of functions if you do want to continue your mathematical career further. Now, when you're learning the quadratic formula, for example, it's very difficult to be able to tell whether you're getting your answers correct. So what my students, for example, is I get a lot of them ask me, you know, th these answers are crazy. Am I getting the right answer? Is this correct? And what I always refer them to do is to put their function into a graph. Yes, it's that simple. If you want to solve the roots of functions in a matter of seconds, all you have to do is put it into a graph. Now you can do this old school with pen and paper, or you can, you know, use a graphics calculator. I would recommend with more complicated functions that you do put it into a graphics calculator. That way you can be a bit more precise. But it's just that simple. So say if we take, for example, y equals x squared. Well, as you can see, it's a lovely curve next to me. And all we have to do to solve the roots of the function is work out where our curve, our funkadelic line, wherever it crosses our x-axis, which is the horizontal line. And as you can see in my curve, the only place in which it touches our horizontal line is at zero. So that's our answer. The root of the function y equals x squared is zero. And that makes sense because if we were trying to solve, you know, zero equals x squared, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a number multiplied by itself that would give you zero. And the only possible answer is in fact zero because zero times zero will give you zero. So let's move on to a different function. Let's go with y equals x squared minus four. Well, as you can see, again, it gives us a nice curve, but this time it actually crosses our horizontal line, our x axis twice. It crosses it at negative two and also at positive two. So these are the roots of our function. And if we plug these into our equation in place of x, we'll get the answer of zero. So if we plug in negative two, where we've got x squared, or positive two, where we've got x squared, it would give us four. And four minus four will give us zero. So that has to be the roots of the function. But we don't even need to check that. Once we see where it intersects our x axis, that's it, we're done. So let's go into another, another function. Let's go y equals x squared plus 2x plus 6. Well, as you can see from my function, it doesn't actually cross the x-axis. What that's telling me, what my graph is shouting at me, is that this function doesn't have any roots. There is no value that I can put into x that will, that will make the function equal 0. So rather than then spending time using the quadratic formula rather than, you know, using more algebra, I can simply use this graph and save myself a lot of time to show that it doesn't have an answer that will satisfy zero equals that function. So then I can move on to my next function, which is an even more complicated one. So we've got y equals x to the power of six plus four x to the power of three minus eight. Well, as we can see here, we've got two, two possible places where it intersects our x-axis. We've got it at negative 1.761, and we've also got it at positive 1.136. So those are our answers. Those numbers we can put into our function and it would make it equal zero. So we, again, we've taken a very complicated function, a, a, a function that has an x to the order of six, very complicated, and we've been able to solve the roots in a matter of seconds. So we've got one more. So we've got y equals x to the power of 3 minus 2x to the power of 2 minus x plus 1. So again, a quite complicated function, 
But as you can see next to me, we can solve it in seconds. And we can see that it crosses the x-axis three times. It crosses it at negative 0.802. It crosses it at 0.555. And it crosses it at 2.247. So we found three roots for that problem already in a matter of seconds. So we don't have to worry about difficult algebra or very complicated formulas when we can solve it in a matter of seconds. Now this is a great way to check your work or it's a great way if you're trying to solve these types of problems when you're not really wanting to spend as much time using the different types of formulas. Now this is a great segue to go into the fact that John Fair Innovations is actually expanding. So what we're offering now, if you're in the Australian area, is one-on-one -on -one maths consultations. And right now, if you go to www.johnfairinnovations.com, you can contact us now for one free 15-minute consultation where we can work out the best way to help you. But thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, be kind to one another, and I'll see you next time.